Coming up, fun in the sun. Everything you need to know about sunscreen and why it's so important. Then two residents from Sesame Street will be here to talk about a new campaign to help kids cope with all kinds of emotions. I will tell them that there's a lot of ways to deal with big feelings. Uh, my favorite ones are uh, uh, dancing, putting some music. You like to dance? Yeah, I love to dance. You know, I like to shake my feelings Whoa. out the best. Also, read all about it. This four-year-old boy is using his reading skills to help inspire other kids. Plus, Prickly Bundle of Joy, a new addition at this Pennsylvania Zoo, has us wondering what are porcupines all about? We have the answers. And Kate the Chemist is back. Wow. Ooh. All this and more just ahead in front of our all kid audience. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you here on a Saturday morning. I hope you're all enjoying the weekend so far. We've got a super lineup ahead. Rosita and G Young from Sesame Street will join us with an important message just for you. Sometimes when we have big feelings, they can feel like there's hot bubbling lava inside of us. Yeah. So put your hands together in front of your chest. Okay. okay like, like this. Like right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you breathe in through your nose. Plus, we'll have some fun a little later on with Kate the Chemist. Now we're going to aim right at the camera, and let's see if we can get any of these to fly out. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. There we go. There we go. Get in the There we go. Pull it back. Pull it back really far. But first, the days are getting longer, and the weather is getting warmer. That means more time spent outside. And there's one thing that is super important when you're outdoors, sunscreen. Our pal, Dr. John Torres, explains. about staying safe in the sun. We wear hats, sunglasses, and sunscreen. But how does sunscreen work? That is such a great question. Now, we all need sun to keep us healthy, but too much sun can damage our skin, which is why we wear sunscreen. When the sun shines, it sends two types of ultraviolet, or UV rays, to Earth. UVA rays go deep into your skin and cause it to age and wrinkle. UVB rays are absorbed by the top layer of skin and cause sunburns. The goal is to stop both, and that's where sunscreen comes in. Sunscreen can work in two ways. It can reflect the UV rays away from your skin, or it can absorb the rays before they get into your skin. Most sunscreen does a bit of both. Sunscreen is one of the best ways we can keep our skin healthy and protected from the damaging rays of the sun. Another term you'll see on sunscreen, SPF. It stands for sun protection factor. This number tells you how long the sun's UV rays would take to redden your skin with sunscreen versus without. For example, if it takes five minutes to get a sunburn, if you wear sunscreen with SPF 30, it would take about 150 minutes or two and a half hours to get a sunburn. Sunburns are usually kind of sneaky. Sunburns can be hard to feel at the time that they're happening. That's why applying sunscreen regularly, even when your mom asks, at the pool every two hours is the best way to prevent that damage happening and that pain happening on your skin. Now, if you do get sunburned, take a cold bath, apply aloe vera gel or moisturizer, and do your best not to scratch. But don't be afraid to go outside. It's actually really important. Did you know the sun has benefits that help your body? Sunlight boosts a chemical in the brain called serotonin, which can improve your mood and help you get better sleep. And you also get vitamin D from the sun. That helps keep your bones strong and strengthens your immune system. So grab that sunscreen, a hat and some shades and get ready for a safe and hopefully sunny summer. We turn now to a very special segment. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and this month, Sesame Street is kicking off a multi-year emotional well-being initiative, a commitment to help kids learn how to understand and manage their feelings. Let's put our hands together and welcome Rosita and G Young from Sesame Street. All the way from Sesame Street. This is 
This is so cool. This is so, Rosita, I've never met you. Tell me about yourself. Oh, well, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Uh, nice to meet you. Yes. My name is Rosita, la monstruo de las cuevas. That's my full name. You wow. can say it five times all together if you <laughs> want to. Rosita, la monstruo de las cuevas. You know what? I, I live on Sesame Street, but originally, I am from Mexico, so I yeah. my first language is Spanish, Espanol. So you speak two languages. Yes, it's my superpower. Ah, I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm five years old. And Jelaine, we, we have met before. You were on the show once before, but for yeah. those kids who weren't watching, tell us about yourself. Oh, yeah, that's so much fun. Thanks for bringing us back. Uh, mm, hello, my name is Ji Young. I am seven years old. I am a proud Korean American, and I live on Sesame Street, and I love to rock out on my guitar. All right. <laughs> and I have heard her play. She really rocks out. So tell me, you, you've got different people. Tell me about feelings and how you guys cope with feelings. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, you know, big feelings. It's something we all have. I get them, Rosita has them. I bet even Mr. Lester and all our friends at home have big feelings. Yeah, and sometimes, you know what, your belly gets all tied up, mm. and then you start feeling hot. Oh, yeah, what, what is that? All over. Well, uh, you know, your body feels funny, so yeah. uh, it's when you feel, I don't know, you might be feeling sad or angry. I, yeah, there's know. all kinds of big feelings, right, Rosita? You can feel happy feelings, or sad or angry, or, or even scared We sometimes. all kind of get those feelings sometimes, don't yeah. we? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Blaster. You want to know my big feeling right now? Yeah. I'm just so happy to be here. Aww, Aww. Rosita. So, so happy. Yeah, me, me too, me too. But you know, Mr. Lester, sometimes I get nervous feelings too. Like, like say, on the first day of school, when I don't know what to expect. So what message would you share with kids to help them deal with their feelings? And their mm. sad days and their happy days and all the days in between? Yeah, well, I will tell them that there's a lot of ways to deal with big feelings. Yeah. Um, my favorite ones are uh, uh, dancing, putting some music. You like to dance? Yeah, I love to dance. You yeah, know, I like dancer. to shake my feelings Whoa. out. Whoa! Watch out! <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'll tell you something. I like to dance, too. You do, but too? I, I, I'm usually shy about it, though. Oh, well, we should I... go dancing one day. I love that. Yeah, but you know, music is very important for me and exercise, so those are my favorite ones. And also, one thing that calms me down is I, I have a little jar that uh, Abby Kadabi uh, made for me, and I shake it, and I look at the glitter, and that really helps me calm down. Oh, I have a glitter lot. jar, too. How do you calm down, Ji Young? Oh, well, you know, something I learned how to do is belly breathing exercises. And there's one that's my favorite. It's called the Volcano Breath. <laughs> you want to try it with me? Yeah, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, and everyone in the audience, they can try it too. Okay. Okay, so sometimes when we have big feelings, it can feel like there's hot bubbling lava inside of us. Yeah. So put your hands together in front of your chest. Okay. okay like, like this? Like right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you breathe in through your nose. <sighs> Sorry, I have allergies. Oh, my. Can I let it out? Yeah. And, and then slowly raise oh, slowly. your arms up. Oh. And then the hot lava is rising up and out. And then breathe out through your mouth as you move your arms down. And that's uh. the lava flowing down to the ground. And that just makes you feel calmer. Yeah, you go. Kaboom! Bam! Boom! Bam! Boom! boom. <laughs> yeah, you just let it out. Noises. By the way, you have quite you the wingspan there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I have wings. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, how do you feel? Right now, Mr. Uh, you know, I, first of all, I feel calmer being with friends and people who are nice and caring. And, no. and make, and make, no, it's great to have people like you come on and, and you know share your story. So it's you know, Mr. Lester, I think friends they always help us to 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 be kinder and stronger, right? Yeah. To learn from each other. Yeah. We've got kids. Yeah. We've got kids with some great questions. I think Grant is in the audience right now. Grant has a question. Where are you, for you Grant? Guys. Where is there? Where's He's up there. there. Oh, hi. What do you do when you feel anxious? Oh, oh wow, Grant, yeah. I really like your question, right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Oh, let me see when I feel uh, nervous or sad. You know what I do, Grant? I, I give myself a hug like this. I put my arms around me. Oh. And then I take a moment to calm down. And then I tell myself, you'll be OK. You can do it. And I bet you can, too. Yeah, yeah, that helps me a lot, Grant. 
That's a great, great question, great answer. Rosita Jiyun, great having you here. Stop by any time, okay? Really? Absolutely. The door is always open for you. Oh, thank amazing. you very much. All right. We have a beautiful group of kids here. Wow, so many kids. Hi, everybody. A big hand for Rosita and Ji Young. Time now for our pop quiz. This week we're talking geography. The question, which city is farther west? Is it A, Los Angeles, California, or B, Reno, Nevada? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, time's up. Now, I grew up in California. I think I know the answer, because California kind of makes this bend in the middle or near the top. The answer is Reno, Nevada. Yes, I know it's wild, but the city of Reno, based on the coordinates, is actually farther west than Los Angeles because of that bend I talked about. Did you know that Reno is one of the sunniest cities in the U.S. and the city parks are home to more than 150 different tree species? All right, well, just ahead, one zoo just welcomed this prickly new addition. We have everything you need to know about porcupines and some facts might surprise you. Plus, this four-year-old just authored his first book about a superhero with a super message for kids. We have details. And Kate the Chemist will be here with an experiment you can try at home with your parents or caregiver's permission, of course. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's give it up for our all-kid audience. Terrific. A terrific bunch with us. Well, let's head to Pennsylvania, where one zoo is welcoming a new addition and one that is rather, shall we say, prickly. Let's get details now from our friend Kristen Dahlgren. There's a new baby at the Elmwood Park Zoo, and he's looking pretty sharp. A baby porcupine was just born in Norristown, Pennsylvania to porcupine parents Jasmine and Spork. Baby porcupines are typically called porcupets. Our male um, porcupine uh, was about the size of maybe a, a grapefruit when he was born. And although their quills are soft and fluffy when they're born, porcupets get prickly pretty quickly. Baby porcupines are born with quills. Um, they don't start to get spiky, really, or be hard until a couple of days after they're born. So us even trying to weigh him every day, we have to be careful and wear gloves because he does have those uh, spiky quills already. Speaking of quills, what are those spiky things? They are actually just really strong hairs. They're made out of keratin, just like our own fingernails. Uh, so they are a type of hair that's just formed really sharp um, and they use it to defend themselves. Did you know an adult porcupine can have as many as 30,000 quills all over their body? Some are soft and the sharp ones protect porcupines from predators. A very common myth is that porcupines shoot their quills. That's actually not true. They just back up into a predator and then the quills get onto the predator. So they use it to protect themselves. Porcupines are nocturnal creatures which means they sleep a lot during the day and get really excited at night. They're herbivores, snacking on leaves, roots, and bark in the wild, and fruits like bananas and cantaloupes at the zoo. And the North American porcupine can be found all over forested areas in the U.S., up into Canada, or even the very top of Mexico. So if you're in the woods and you hear this sound, be careful, because a prickly creature might be nearby. Have you ever wondered what the difference is between a porcupine and a hedgehog? We asked our expert at the Elmwood Park Zoo to explain. Porcupines are a lot larger, but hedgehogs' quills are a lot different from the um, porcupines' quills. And the places that you're going to find them are going to be very different, so you, you can't necessarily walk out into a forest and <laughs> finds a hedgehog, but you could potentially with a porcupine. A hedgehog is typically something that people would find to have as a pet, um, and a porcupine wouldn't work out that way where it would make a good pet at all. Porcupines are solitary creatures in the wild, which means they like their alone time and prefer to live by themselves. 
However, they usually stick with their parents for about a year after they're born, which means the new porky pet at the Elmwood Park Zoo will stay with his family in the months to come, living in a prickle. That's the word for a group of porcupines. All right, time now for our Inspiring Kids series. This week, we introduce you to a four-year-old boy who is using his reading skills to help inspire other children. Our friend Riley Nagel has the story. At four years old, King Chambers is already a superhero with super strength, super speed, and most importantly, the ability to read. There's a boy named King. He was a very smart student who loved to read and learn new things. King recently wrote his first book titled King the Dream, which is about a superhero who teaches others how to read. He loved reading, he loved math. He, he's just very, very smart. King's mother, Jennifer Ellis, says he learned how to read at the age of two. And I read books to him all the time, and he loved it. How many books would you say you've read so far? I read 90 books. Ellis says once King started mastering more and more books, he told his mom he wanted to write a book about himself as a superhero. And he came up with he could teach kids how to read. And so we helped him put it all together, put his dream in a book. King is very proud of his book. He loved to teach kids how to read. Anytime he see a kid, he let them know about his book. And they are so excited because it's nothing like having your own peer teach you how to read. King will be starting school next year, and we're all very excited to see his accomplishments and his next book. The end. Our next guest has made it her mission to make chemistry fun. And kids, you're going to love this. Joining us is Kate Berbedorf, author and professor who is also known as Kate the Chemist. And Kate, it is great to have you with us. And we also, and we also have Lucy, one of our kid correspondents here, is going to join me to interview you. <laughs> This is terrific. You know, it's so fun having you on. You and I have done this over Zoom before, but to have you in the studio, I'm sure the kids right now are looking at this like, what's this all about? I know. We will get to this in a moment, but I want to <laughs> talk about you. What, it is, what is it about science that you so much love sharing with kids? Well, honestly, it explains everything around you. So how your car engine works, how your contacts work, every single thing you can use science to explain it. And I just love that, because I was always the kid who asked, why, why, why? Were any of you that? Did you do that? Yeah. yeah? Yeah, and science gives us the answer, so that's why I love it. It's yeah, cool. Yeah, and you Lucy, like you got some questions? When did you know you wanted to be a scientist? Did someone inspire you? Oh, good question, good question. Yes, so I had this amazing high school teacher, Mrs. Kelly Paltrock, hugs and kisses. Um, she was amazing, and she would run around the classroom, light stuff on fire, and so ever since I was 15, I knew I wanted to be a chemist because of one teacher. So to any teachers out there, thank you so much. You make a huge difference. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the experiments we're going to do today. I, I guess this first one, kids probably shouldn't try it at home. Probably not. I mean, you need liquid nitrogen to do yeah, it. So, so I... if you have that at home, then okay. Um, <laughs> most of us don't. Most of us don't. So, Lucy, I'm going to have you help me with this one. So can you put these gloves on for me, please? And then, Lester, you have these if you want to play, but what you don't need to. What are these, to. like uh, kitchen? Kitchen gloves. Yeah, <laughs> kitchen pretty close. Gloves, right? These are cryo we're make a roast. cryogenic gloves. And so we use them whenever we play with a cryogenic, and liquid nitrogen is a cryogenic. And so, Lucy, I'm going to ask you to take one step back, just for safety. Perfect. Now I'm going to add liquid nitrogen here. Wow. Ooh, ah. Look at this. OK, Lucy, for fun, come over here for me. You're going to take a big, deep breath, and we're going to blow in here. One, two, three. Oh. Wow. Does that feel cool? All right, so I'm just putting that back there to keep it safe from us so we don't trip on it. So liquid nitrogen is extraordinarily cold. It's 77 Kelvin or negative 194 degrees Celsius. So 25 degrees right here, negative 200 right there. And that's do why you put your hand in there? That's why you're wearing those gloves. No, this is why we wear the gloves. <laughs> so what we're going to do is see what happens when we put an octopus in liquid nitrogen. So I'm going to need your help here, Lucy. Can you help me gather the legs? We're only going to be able to get the legs in here. Perfect. And I'll take it once you go with me. Thank you. And I'll I'll go from here. Very gentle, very gentle. Now, Lucy, can you put your hands out for me? Perfect. And we're gonna just put this right there. Keep your hands nice and flat. No matter what, don't move your hands, okay? I'm take oh, look what's back. happening. Whoa. There you go. <laughs> it's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. 
Cool. It's trying to fly. <laughs> Basically, what we see is as the temperature went down, the pressure went down, or the volume went down. Isn't that cool? That's what, just a simple balloon you did that. Just as a simple balloon. There's helium in its head, and so it's trying to float up, but it's a little, it's just thinking about it. Do you like that one? Yes. Yes? Okay, so just for fun. Whoa. Okay, cool. Oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> isn't that cool? Yeah. All right, are we ready to move on to the next one? I think we are. I'm still blown away by this one. All right, so what we're going to do is move down and then walk away from the liquid nitrogen for me. Now we're going to make poppers. And so you all have one in your bag, but wait till I tell you. Oh, there we go. What we're going to do is make poppers here. So we're each going to have a pool noodle, and then we have a balloon. So Lester and Lucy, I need okay. you to tie that into a knot. Just right there at the edge. Right okay. there, tie a knot for me. Perfect. And then once we have our balloon and our knot, we're going to cut the tip off of it. Perfect. Nice job. And then we're going to pull it, pull it, pull it like this. You can do mine. OK, here. <laughs> <laughs> and then you want to do that? Will you knot it for them? Sure. And then we're going to cut the edge off just like this. And so now we have a balloon that has a knot on one side and it's open on the other side, OK? And so Lester, why don't you come on over here? And what I'm going to have you do is pull this over the pool noodle, and you okay. want to make it as tight as you possibly can. Perfect. Good job, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. Lester couldn't do it, but we got Lucy there here. We go. Thank yeah. goodness. We got the pros here. All right. Now your turn. So you're going to open it up and put it directly over it, just like Lester did. And we want to pull that down as far as we possibly can. Ah, okay. All right. So now we need to wrap it around with tape. I've got orange, yellow, green, pink, purple. What do I use? Pink. Pink I for heard you. pink. I heard pink. Okay, what other color? Take a take big, a big piece of tape and just wrap it around. Perfect. Yep, take your time out, Annie. Right right here? Yep, right around. We want to keep that nice and tight as possibly. Yep, perfect. Just like that. And wrap and wrap and wrap. Now, at home, if you want to do this, you don't have to use a pool noodle. You could use like a paper towel holder, the centerpiece. You could use the toilet paper ring. Um, you could even use a cup that you've chopped the edge off of. Basically, you just need a thing with a hole in it. And then you need tape and you need a balloon, OK? Because what we're trying to do here is make a popper like this, where we can put something in, this, in the uh, middle of this. I know where this is going. Pull it back and then slingshot. Okay. Okay, so you each have one, so now it's time. Open your baggie. See what we did here? Perfect, yours looks really good. Now in your baggie, you've got both pom-poms and you have marshmallows. You can put them in the cup if you want or just throw the cup away, whatever you want. And then what we're gonna do is take these mini marshmallows, grab about five of them. So you've got some there, Lester. Okay. And we're gonna put about five or so in here. Perfect. Oops. Listen up, y'all, listen up, here we go. We're gonna put five marshmallows in here. Grab from the back, get them down, kind of pull them down, let them kind of fall into that nook, right? Now we're gonna aim right at the camera and let's see if we can get any of these to fly out, okay? Ready, one, two, three, go. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> None of them went, oh geez, Louise. There we go, there we go, get in the, there we go. Pull it back, pull it back really far. We've got our pom poms in there, you can put yours in here too as you're stuck. Oh, we got too many, there you go, there you go, try it again. There we go, now we see it. Get them. It takes a little bit to get them to go. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get in your mouth, Grace? Let's see. <laughs> All right, well, Kate, thank you so much. I want to thank our Kids Edition correspondent, Lucy, for helping out with this segment. This is a lot of fun. It's a lot of and fun. And by the way, there's science in here. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely science. It's all about converting potential to kinetic energy. Connect to potential to kinetic exactly. energy. Exactly. All right. Thanks again. Lucy, thank you. Great job. Well, that's going to do it for us. We hope you learned a few things and had some fun. Clearly, you are having some fun. Nightly News Kids Edition publishes every Thursday on NBCNews.com and YouTube. Thanks for being part of the program, guys. A big round of applause for you guys.